Hello, and welcome to the bi-weekly live edition of, hey, did you see this one? 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 This week, this week, we're start. Let's just, let's just, even though we have a plan for the summer, let's say, let's assume, let's figure out, let's find out what month the cell came out. And we're doing the cell. We're doing the cell. Uh, this the one cell, was re was recent, or not? Like I think it was to an anniversary. No, I know, but what month? What it came out in August, so technically we can start our summer summer of summer films series. Summer uh, films, or what? What did you, you call it last time? The summer of summer films yeah. series. Yeah, I, I'm not super original, but it's very concise, very to the point. You can figure out, you can find out what we're doing based on the title of it. Um, I'll be advertising things. I'll be putting it up on my live. Additionally, um, Wednesday night, uh, this will probably already air by the time people have seen this, but we're going to try doing a live Blossom Buddies. But that's a different thing for a different time. Tonight... What's that going to be on? What's, we're going to do it on We're gonna do it on here as well, around the same time. Probably 8.30 Eastern. What, you told your buddy how much fun we were having doing lives on here, and now he wants uh, to give it a go? Yeah. Yes. So... I'm going to grab a, a beer. You, you'd think that I would have done that before I, uh, you know, waited for you to come onto the live. But why don't you tell, why don't you tell our viewer, that's see what I did there? That, that what? Okay, well, why don't, you t why don't you tell everybody who want to watch this in the future what movie we're doing this week? What up, everyone? Uh, this week, or today, whatever, um, this bi-weekly schedule... Uh, we are doing the cell. Uh, let's see if I can get a good image. There it is. There it is, right there. There it is. With Jennifer Lopez and a guy I can't really pronounce his last name. Vincent oh, D'Onofrio. He he's the guy from fucking. He's the guy from uh, Full Metal Jacket. He's also Daredevil. What was it? Daredevil. And Men in Black. He played Edgar or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I need, I need, um, I need water, sugar and water, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of the best character actors in the history of Hollywood. He's a lot like, he's a lot, he's really methody. Um, he hasn't gotten the kind of roles that somebody like, uh, uh, what's his face from There Will Be Blood and Lincoln. Who am I thinking of, Kalen? Co-host. Lewis? Uh, yeah, I'm talking about Daniel Day-Lewis. Um. He's not that level of actor. He doesn't get those roles, but he's in a lot of movies that would have that level of actor in them, uh, playing excellent character parts. And this is this is crazy. This movie was uh, a lot different than I thought it was going to be. It's a lot more of a thriller, psychological horror, uh, like crime movie. Did you get a Did you get a bit of a Silence of the Lambs kind of feel? Yeah. Yeah, I got a sound for the lambs, uh, like Mind Hunter, the TV, the TV show Mind Hunter, kind of. But the thing is, that's that show on Netflix where that's about like the early days of profiling serial killers. It's a good show. Um, oh but, yeah, yeah, like when they first coined the the name serial killer or something like that. Yeah. So the interesting thing here is that you still get a little bit of that like procedural, uh, which I thought was cool. But they didn't. He they they find him in like the first forty minutes. I forgot and then, how quickly they found him. But then I was like, oh yeah, they need to because they have to go inside his. Well, then, as I've said before on many shows, on many episodes of this show, they had to get to the home the home alone ness of it or whatever. We need to yeah. coin an actual term for that. Yeah. The home alone factor. The home alone factor. Yeah. Okay, I like it. Do you want to see something weird? Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm doing this on TikTok also. Okay. So it's Should just TikToking it. No, I mean it won't. It, it doesn't work unless we're both like if we were both on both. But I can't invite guests because I don't have sixty thousand fucking whatever. I don't know. I think I need a thousand followers. 
but uh, I am, I did put on this that um, I am post, like I did say, come to my Instagram to see the both sides of the conversation. And I wore, uh, a, I wore a band Yeezy today. Is it because it's uh, 30,000 degrees? We're, we're, we're 2,000 kilometers apart, but uh, I imagine it's just as hot in Halifax as it is here because it is the end of days. It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, among other things, exactly. Hot and sticky. Today was a sticky one. Yeah. Humid. I, I luckily, <laughs> excuse me, didn't have to leave the house. Uh, but we did take our box spring to the front of the house. And the, like, five minutes that I was outside lifting something, <laughs> uh, caused me to, uh, sweat profusely. <laughs> what was for Din Din? I had uh, I had roasted roasty po roasty potatoes homemade. Are you putting the thumbs down for roasty potatoes? No, I'm counting. I'm just counting in a different sort of cool way. Oh, okay. I'm trying. I'm a new. I'm starting a fad where you where you count upside down. Um, roasted potatoes. I I made a piece of fish, just like a basic a bitch freezer fish? fish. Piece of fish. And then fish. I had a piece of fish. <laughs> And then, it's funny you should say that, I warmed up a piece of pizza from last night. Oh, what, you didn't fucking play uh, Frisbee with it first? No. Wasn't I actually know how to, I, I know how to bring pizza back to life pre pretty good. Wasn't that one of your TikToks? That's, yes. Was it? I don't know, I make so many of them. <laughs> and, <laughs> I make so many of them, and I get literally tens of views. It's a waste of time. So, <laughs> well, it's not a waste of time if you're gonna be, you know, awake anyway. That's true. That's that's actually why I do it. I make them. I'll see something cool, and I'll be like, you know what? I'm gonna throw down a little TikTok, a little duet on this. I made a couple today. They were pretty funny. Go over there and check me out in, uh, at in, Important Influencer, my name, on TikTok, because I'm so, so important. It speaks, the name speaks for itself. It's true. I hope when people see that, they're like, ooh, they look at, like, so I'll go into lives, I'll go into other people's lives, and I'll say, like, a funny thing, and they'll think that I'm trolling, which I usually am. <laughs> and then they'll, ch they'll click on my account, and they'll be like, you only have 500 followers, bro. But how do you have 12,000 likes? That doesn't make any sense. Those ratios are all fucked. And I don't know what to tell them. Honestly, I don't. I leave. I usually leave as a coward. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Some so. Randomly and like that one, but then. So, I, I, I have it. But it, it's so like. There's no organization or something. It feels like it's just it's just like I can't I can't I'm too like I'm too old or something for it. Like I just can't. I'll explain it. I'll explain to you what I did to make it make more sense off off camera off the show. You asked me. You asked me like, what is this? I didn't really give you a really good answer, but there's a way to make it so it's not just like nonsense. So we're talking about the cell, the year 2000. Cell. Jennifer hey, Jennifer hey, Lopez. Did you see this one? Uh, it's the two we got. We got about yeah. We got forty-five minutes to, to break it down for the people. Um, so off the top, we basically get a situation where Jennifer Lopez Keep is like them. some Keep telling them. Keep telling them. some sort of like. I think she's supposed to be like a like a psychotherapist. She's she's like what, a child therapist or whatever. But it's it's like the distant future where they have this like technology yeah. that lets you yeah. go into like a skin suit, and then they put like they put a little towel over your face that has like a, do you see the towel with the microchip bit over? It? I, I thought that was like, so funny. Yeah, the, they the director don't... wanted to do something a little bit more, um, but they just didn't have like the like CGI at the time for it or some shit like that. Oh, I'll get to the CGI. It, it, I, it, my, I'm pretty sure I wrote it down somewhere. It so also the it, CGI. You want, you want to do more of this? The CGI in this movie oscillates between fucking god awful and like barely passable. That scene where he she meets him as like the emperor for the first time and he he has the oh, like with, big. Uh, the, the, the drapery all around? The big, like, drapery that's around, and he pulls it off. The drapery yeah. on the walls until 
until he actually walks down the stairs are CGI. Yeah. And then it blatantly becomes practical. I watched this, like I watched a 1080p copy. I don't think these late 90s movies, early 2000s movies are really meant to be watched in such high resolution because they were counting. They, I don't think they were counting on the, the, like the definition of really getting that much better. So yeah. they were probably like, ah, the CGI looked fine. Because they, they use it sparsely. There's not a lot. No. But oh my god, when they use it, it's just it sticks out like a sore thumb. And I, I bring this up because I watched The Fifth Element from, that's three years, it came out three years before this movie. Mostly wow. practical effects. But the, CG, the bit of CGI they do use in that movie is so, it, it's so well used. Yeah. That you don't really, you kind of forgive it, you don't notice it as much. But in this, it was just like, I don't know if the technology changed and they were trying to use a slightly better CGI that actually ends up hitting yeah. the Uncanny Valley a lot harder. Yeah. I, uh, I actually kind of like that scene that when, the, when he's walking down from the throne, I wrote that. So there, like with this movie, there wasn't too much for like, ooh, like that's a favorite scene, that's a favorite scene or like quotables or whatever, right? Like some movies have like quotables and stuff. Um, but I did like that scene when he's walking down just because it, it felt like epic. And then the the scene, I call her, let's call her Queen J-Lo when he like has her taken over kind of. And she's like, yeah. she's like, whatever, his little queen pet or whatever. And she's like, just looking right into or like right past the camera or whatever. It was, that was just like a really dope look. I, I really liked the look of it. Yeah, I mean, J-Lo, okay, so J-Lo was great in this because she didn't have to reach to, she just kind of had to be there. The, the, yeah, the woman in the film. She just had to be a passable therapist kind of character. My problem was with Vince Vaughn, who Shout had to. Vince Vaughn trying to break out of the comedic stereotype. But kind of failed at it. Like, kind of. So the first time you see him, he's like doing his Vince Vaughn smirk. And then he talks, and he's not doing his Vince Vaughn voice. He's doing a very, like, trying to be very, like, serious, but yeah. he can't. He's got his cadence is all fucked. Yeah. So he was really off-putting. I think they should have gone for – I do get that in 2000, Vince Vaughn was becoming the guy that you just put in every single movie. Yeah. But I don't think I don't think it makes – like, J-Lo's timeless because she hasn't aged. She hasn't aged since In Living Color, you know? She's right. just looked better and better and better. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this is this captures her at a certain time in her career. Vince Vaughn just is like trying to do a good good job, and that's the, kind of the problem with his performance in this movie. I got you know he does have he does have some great parts. It's a good character. I like that like I'll do what it takes, detective. I'll I won't sleep. I won't eat. I'll keep doing the job till the job's done. I like that. I like those characters. Yeah. I don't like Vince Vaughn trying not to ham it up yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah he didn't ham it up so i'll give him credit for that great edge like, like he he was trying to break out of being like typecast or whatever as funny. but yeah uh, you know stick with what you're good at or whatever yeah and the most noteworthy movie he had done before this i guess was uh made and I guess the most noteworthy movie he did after this was fucking, like, the Psycho, the Psycho remake and then yeah. Wedding Crashers. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I don't know. I've never really looked at Vince Vaughn's IMDb. I'm going to pull that up. He was in Dodgeball. You know, that's that's the Vince Vaughn that I like. That, that's, Fast yeah. talking, cracking 100 jokes a second, the, you know? He kind of has a bit of a Bill Murray style to his yeah. I can see that. While you're looking that up, I'll hit our viewers with some facts. So this was the director's <laughs> first feature film. Um, mostly, uh, what is this? He, uh, he, he directed music videos prior. Um, was, uh, I guess got his notoriety from R.E.M.'s Losing My Religion music video. Sorry, when I sorry when I said made, I meant swingers. Swingers, yeah. Well, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Made is later. Made is like him and uh, what's his face from Swingers getting together again to basically make the same movie ten years later. Yeah. But that's, that's what they. That's what good teams in Hollywood do, and especially somebody like John Favreau who fucking hits it out of the park with like everything he does. We can be a team. We are a team. We're the the duo of. Did you see this one? Beard buddies. Beard the, buddies. The, Formerly known as Beard 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 Buddies. I gotta shave this monster off my face. It's getting too hot. It's that's that's yeah, that's what did it for me. It was too hot, man. Just too hot. I need a wetsuit. Like uh you know what? I was looking online. I, I might buy one, but there's like a website that sells like shirts that are supposed to like make you cold. Maybe we can uh get more than zero viewers and become a partner with them. Ooh. You never know. Arctic breeze or something. Yeah. They call it they call it wet wet chest. Oh you cold you yet? Pin? Can you pin things? Hey, did you freeze this one? <laughs> that's a little take on uh that's a little take on how the show is called Hey, did you see this one? So yeah, uh, to get just to finish my thought about um, Vince Vaughn being in movies, <clears throat> he he wasn't in like a whole lot of stuff. Uh, that really, he's he's like the opposite of Kevin Bacon, where Vince Vaughn was working, um, pretty consistently actually, pretty consistently. But he's he his acting style is all over the place. So I prefer to see him in something like a Fred Claus or uh, Delivery Man movies. I'll, I'll probably never w- watch Delivery Man, but like I love him as uh, as West Mantooth and in, in Anchorman One and Two. You know, like that kind of that's Vince Vaughn to me. This yeah. wasn't Vince Vaughn to me. Uh, they really, I wish they would have used Dean Morris more. Uh, Dean Norris, sto- sorry, that's uh, that's he, he's from Breaking Bad. Um, uh- Oh right, the, the uh, yeah 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 yeah. He kind of looks like Michael Chiklis, but he's from Breaking Bad and not from The Shield. Uh, I he was good in this, but he's he, he's probably been typecast as a police officer in everything he's ever done. I'm pretty sure that's true. Yeah. So, but J Lo just didn't need. She just she was good enough, and then Vincent D'Onofrio comes in and fucking just went too far i'd say to see <laughs> yeah like his acting compared to theirs is like next level so he, this character yeah, this serial uh, killer I, I don't think he went too far i think the rest of them didn't go far enough like yeah. how warped this movie was uh actually on that note his wife wouldn't sleep with him for like two weeks or whatever after seeing the movie vincent d'onofrio's wife is that that's the main guy, right? The serial killer. The serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She was. She was. She was creeped out. He did a that's good job. uh. That's a good. That's job, understandable. Mike. It's like they took. They took a fucking serial killer, a list of things serial killers have done, and they put them all on a on a dartboard, and they threw like five darts. And then those five things, he they combine that into a profile for a serial killer. And this fucking guy, his thing, his 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 motif or his calling card was uh, like he put women in his vat, and then slowly like fill the vat up, and film it, and then like, you know, you know, toss one out to them, like drowning, and then after they yeah. were dead. He he'd make them look like a doll and dump them somewhere really blatantly, like just just like in two feet of water. So I told and, you last, uh, when I like when I when I first saw this movie, it was uh, it was probably junior high. If it was two thousand. I had a sleepover at a buddy's, and his mom like like was like, "Hey, what are you guys like? Oh, we're just gonna watch a movie." And then she like looked at it, and on the back it said like, you know blah 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 scenes of masturbation or whatever she flipped out i so the there's I, I think it happened two times so there's when he when we first meet him and there's like the first girl 
and then he goes like and like sits it like he like crouches over at a chair or whatever. Like I think that's one of them. Which I didn't really like if if I wouldn't have noticed if she didn't make a big deal out of it. And then I think the second one is when he's hanging after she's dead or something like that. He's hanging over her and like yelling. I think he's also doing it then. As I well. I think he was doing it then too. Something that was interesting that I noticed is that they show the um they show the body suits before they show him. We'll, we'll get to what his what his weird thing is in a minute. His other weird thing is the yeah. body suits look flesh colored. Like they look like muscle suits. The, muscle, like the things yeah. that you go into the cell with, and then. Or the whatever the fuck it's called, and and also, then there's they hooks. Never the name title. I don't think they dropped the name title. No, they didn't. They didn't. I'm watching Insidious, and they have a name for where the afterlife is, and they have a name. They dropped the name in the movie like in ten minutes in that one as well. And they, I was waiting for it because that's one of the things we point out on this show. But so the suit looks flesh colored. It has these hooks in it that are hanging it above a a, a table. And the table moves down when they go into the cell land or whatever the fuck it's called. We find out, we find out that he actually has the body mutilation, torture, self, uh, like, like masochism thing that is seen in like, I, I think it was like practiced by some indigenous peoples. Uh, I've, I've, you, you can look it up on the internet and see, but people put hooks in their skin and like, Usually it's they do a routine, some sort of like floating thing where they're lifted off the ground by like their back skin. Apparently it's it's an excruciating, but like <clears throat> it's a way to like open up, you know. I don't know much about it, I just know it existed before. You know what I mean? What? To open up your chakras or something? Maybe. Uh maybe. But I was like, that's weird. That's weird that the, that imagery is in this film. And then when they show him hanging, when you say he was hanging, he was chained to the ceiling with these these implants all down his back of these hooks that he would hang himself up with. How they were very prominent. I don't know. I probably went to a place and got them done. No, no. I mean, how if I was to guess, once he has those things, and like, how did he hook them in? Right? Like, I mean, I'm pretty tired to my back, but like. That yeah, he probably went to a, he probably went to like a body art place and was like, I want to get these things put in because I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a hang by my skin thing. Yeah, but when he when he goes to hang himself, how does he, how does he? Go? Oh, how does he actually get up there? Well, if I was to guess, he had them. <laughs> I didn't think about this till now, but it kind of clicked in my head. He's probably got like a wall where they're hung up in a certain way, so he can just kind of like, just kind of like. Bloop, and just get get all the hooks at the same time, maybe. Oh. The ones down here, he can probably get, you know, the ones on his leg. But there's probably the top four that you can't really reach. Yeah. He probably just goes, bloop. And, th and then he fucking pulls that crank. And then he cranks it, cranks one out, you know, while he's hanging. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is uh, this is PG-13, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think it was. No, this movie's rated R. I mean, this podcast is PG-13. But that's a joke uh, because of the fact that we swear and curse and uh, this movie is especially fucked. Do not show it to your teenage kids. Although, I think if I had, had seen it when I was 15 in 2000, uh, it would be a lot more devastating to me and, and be a lot more fucked up than now. Not only as an adult, but it's so much easier to find way worse things. Like, I'll bring Insidious up again, because this movie is not scary. It's just the same movie as Paranormal Activity, but instead of it being found footage, it's just the, a movie about these things happening to these people. I'm only Insidious. halfway through, though. Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit a little bit better as the movie progresses, but that first half of that movie, oh my god, do something! You're not watching it in one sitting? No, I, I watch movies now. I watch horror movies while I do the dishes. I sat down and watched The Cell, no, but I... you're doing it wrong! No, I'm not. I'm trying to get all the information in my brain. I'm trying to jam my brain full of information. Don't tell me how to do things, Kalen. Okay, my bad. I, I, I've only watched... I watched uh, in, the, in the Tall Grass and, and, and Insidious so far like that. Because I don't have any, like... Not, there's no TV shows I'm really watching right now. 
So like just something to kind of occupy you while you do dishes? Yeah. The cell phone's like at eye level and doing dishes oh, like. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, yeah. No, I don't put the movie on like over there and listen to it. No, yeah. I, the movie's like, the, it's actually, some stuff is like fucked because I'm even closer to the TV than I normally would be. <laughs> Okay, so I have to like, I have to pay attention. Um, yeah. So what what uh, what else we got about this this thing? I, you know, I was watching this movie today, and I'm going. All the other movies we watched, there's been a lot to talk about, mm-hmm. but this this is pretty much like, th- there's not a whole lot to talk about in this one because it's very like it's weird that we were able to get more of Tremors. Like there's a there was a, there's less going on in Tremors, but this movie's kind of like you gotta watch it to to really to really get out of it what you need to get out of it. Yeah, it, uh, it's um, a thrill, psychological thriller kind of detective or well, I'm not sure detective is the right word, but procedural. It's 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 definitely a visual movie. Um, it's just heavy visuals for sure, which is kind of the director's, like, I guess that was kind of his, his MO. Um, the, uh, so I don't, I don't actually have this. I don't actually own this one. All the other ones or almost all the other ones I did, but this one I didn't. Cause usually what I do is I'll watch the movie and then I'll also watch it. And then I'll watch it again with commentary just to like, you know, find out interesting stuff or whatever. But so I was like looking up stuff on the internet about it. And I guess, um, so the girl, I'm pretty sure it's the second girl um, who who they're trying to save. Um, she said that she was uh, like a lifeguard or whatever. Like they asked, like, can you str- like swim? Are you a strong swimmer? She's like, yeah, I'm a lifeguard. And then I guess she like lied or whatever. Uh, and because she like she couldn't like hold like she couldn't hold her breath underwater with like holding her nose or some shit like that. And it fucking pissed her her off. And I guess he was like just going off on her during the commentary, like the whole time. <laughs> so, how did you did you just uh, do the old uh, click the old button on the internet and get the, the movie, or did you find it on? No, I was a pirate. DL. Yeah. So I it it is on Amazon Prime, but it's five dollars to rent, and I almost rented it, but then. I didn't want to spend money. Yeah. So, yar. Yar. Yeah. 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 Um, it's only, it would have only been five bucks, but. But it's only a rental? It's only a rental. How long is that? For like a one watch kind of thing? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no, I think, I think it's like you have it for two days. You can watch as many times as you want for two or three days, which would have been fine. You know, like, I just didn't feel like it. I didn't think it was. I didn't think the movie was going to resonate with me that much that I was going to need to, to, you know, do that. Yeah. And now I have a copy of it. Yeah. If I do want to watch it again, because it might be one of those movies that you get more out of when you rewatch it, but it might not. And it might just, it's just go around. than when I saw it way back in 2000, like I, I wasn't really like, I wasn't like, I wasn't, uh, what's the word, um, like, scarred or whatever. Like, I don't know what the right word to use is. Like, it didn't really, I don't know, maybe I'm, like, desensitized to shit, but, like, it didn't really affect me, like, that way. Like, I just remember it being really visual. And, uh, and yeah, like, watching it again, they, you know. Like, well, here, here's, what I'll, here's what I'll say. When this movie came out, I wouldn't have been able to handle the, the gore. The gore. There's some pretty... There's some pretty gory stuff in it, but there, but also the like how much of a mind fuck some of the things are, like hit like the serial killer alone is a lot. It is is like a lot to wrap your head around because it, he's not just he he's not just doing this one thing. But since they have this technology to go inside of his head, you find out all of his motives, all of the bullshit that happened to him. The first thing you find out when when she goes in. As you see him getting baptized uh, in like the water with a bunch of religious fanatics, and then later on, on in the movie, you find out that that baptism may have been what fucked him up, because he like had a se- he's like I had a seizure underwater for a second, uh, and earlier earlier in the movie from there, Jennifer Lopez sees his brain scan, 
and or or one of the doctors sees the brain scan and is like, well, he has like this virus that gave yeah. him like this crazy this crazy schizophrenia. So so when he brings the 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 uh, stroke or the seizure up later, you kind of go, this guy had like so many brain traumas in probably such a short time. I think he got water in his brain from being baptized, and then he was severely abused by his father for yeah. his whole childhood, and it just balls, ironing shit. just twisted him, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, it didn't just twist him, actually. It made him to a fucking psycho. Uh, psychopath. He, he has this thing where he, he was getting these attacks through the movie, and I think these attacks are what make him lash out, uh, where he would, like, Go for it, go for his aspirin, you know. And it I, kind of... I didn't like. I didn't ever under, Like I didn't understand what caused him to to like go into the coma or whatever it was. Like when the cops, like was it just stressed out because the cops uh, were there? Or I think yeah. I think when like when he's in the bathtub, he, he reaches for his aspirin. He gets it, but he goes downstairs and he he like you know smashes a bunch of stuff off the wall because he's all fucked. And then they come in and they all see him. He's passed out. They detain him, but then they look around his house and yeah. they find the, you know, his attic, which is just filled with like pictures of like beheaded dolls and Bible shit, and like just like the ceiling was lined with it. Then he went. They went to the basement. And they found his like his like procedure den where yeah. he like. But the thing is, the whole so here's the whole crux of the movie. He's he's got this woman freshly trapped and they find out when they invade his house, when they, not invade, I guess invade is the wrong word because they're, you know, going after serial killer. When they infiltrate his house, they yeah. find his, like, his video feed and his tapes yeah. and they realize that this thing, this, this tank, this water tank that fills up is on a timer and he tortures these people by giving them sort of like a false sense of security because it only fills up a little bit at a time. And then they realize they put a ticking timer, you know, the ticking timer trope. They put that on the movie when they're like, we have 40 hours or whatever to get to this woman before the thing fills up and kills her. Could they not trace the, the like, the feed or whatever? Like when they're no, I don't think it was a feed, actually. I think it was just recorded on four cameras, and then he took the tapes to his weird his weird jerk off den. I thought the ones that they found were live. Like I thought that was going on right at that like moment. No, I don't think so. Because they would have been able to trace where the feed is coming from, right? You think? Maybe I missed maybe I missed that. But I thought it was that his tape he they just found tapes from the previous girl that had just been found who who turned into a doll. Right. And then threw over a bridge or whatever. Yeah, th- it just dumped her under a bridge like he he did this thing where he like he like bleached people white to make them more doll like, and I thought that was pretty fucking pretty messed up. And the uh, you get this like there's a part where J Lo goes back in to his head after she so she goes in the first time. It's traumatizing, obviously, because she meets like the emperor. Yeah, she goes back in a second time and she sees all his victims. And how he in he, I the way I interpret it is when he went back in to see them, or when she went back in and saw them is what I meant to say there. It was what he perceived his kills to be or look like or what they represented to him. Different kinds of right. dolls, different kinds of weirdness. And then this super buff like bodybuilder person like picks up yeah. J Lo and delivers her to him. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that. I don't know what the deal with that was. Maybe that was, was just some assistant or something. Yeah. Yeah, but was that a kill that the people never found? I wonder, or is that just something that no, manifested I, in his? I could kill. Oh god. I could be so. Wrong. I could be wrong too, but they didn't really allude to it beyond that. So, oh, is that actually? Is this still the first time when she's in? Is that when we meet him as the 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 emperor with the purple purple drapes? So that's the first time. He's like, "Where do you come from?" or some shit like that. 
and then she gets the, she like does, she pinches the little thing gets out and then the second time she's like is when she she like she gets finds, caught like the six or seven different people or whatever and she like unlocks the bodybuilder or something like that yeah but then he he gets her and she gets caught in there as his like brain slave oh, slave thing and then they're like then they're like okay Vinton it's your turn to go in yeah. He's like, I'll go in. They're like, this is this might be a bad idea because you've never done this before. And he's like, whatever. He yeah. has a whole like Alice in Wonderland trip. The first thing yeah. he sees is like, I did. I like the special effect that they use for like the three girl, the three women with their mouths open, and yeah. they say something to him, and it looked really like really like jaggedy and janky. One thing I didn't like though is when she sees the kid version of him for like the first time. They use this like face effect on him that literally is like you can do it now with a phone. Oh, perfect! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like how his eye, like how his eyes and his nose and his mouth were kind of droopy, yeah. and they only like flashed it. Like I could probably put that, I could probably find that exact fucking. I mean, not this, but you know what I mean. Oh, this thing has effects. Yeah. Here I am. Not using effects like a sucker. I've done this before, and you're like, whoa, dude. You click the three little stars. Look. I'm a fucking lemon. Oh. What's happening? Did you break did you break the feed? So I'm a lemon. I'm no, I'm a lemon. Yeah, you're frozen. I'm going to turn off the effects because oh, oh, no, it's oh, I might be affected. Am I affected? No, you're good now. So, let's check it out. I'm in the cell. I'm in the cell now, and uh, you're in my cell. Oh, yeah, see, I'm raining. I'm peeing on I'm it's peeing lemon raining. juice on you. Uh, we're in, we're in, our, we're in my head. What? I thought it was splashing. I think it's splashing on my face. Oh, no, maybe not. So you're, we're in the cell, and you're in my brain. And uh, hi, I'm a serial killer. And uh, would you uh, <laughs> look at all the kills I've done? Uh, hi, I'm a freak, freak man. OK, this is fucking, this is not good TV. <laughs> How do I put on all of them at the same time? So anyway, uh, and Vince Vaughn goes in, and Vince Vaughn's like, oh, fuck, all of this is crazy. But J-Lo has been turned into, like, you know, slave Leia, basically. Um, and oh, she, she looked really good, actually. Uh, but she has this, like, dead-eye look. She grabs Vince Vaughn and makes out with him, which they never really explored later, like, they did at the very end of the movie. They kind of looked at it. They hugged and then kind of looked at each other. But then, like, not every movie needs everybody to become a relationship at the end. That's awesome. um, but then uh, the serial killer guy, do what's his fucking name? Like uh, Phil. His real name or the name in the movie? Like, what's the serial killer's name? I think it's like Charles or something. It's like he's like a serial killer, so he's got like four names. Uh, one second, one second. Uh, he's like William Trillium Billium Jillium. Where's the man? Oh, here we go. Uh, Carl Starger or something. Like that. Yeah, let me double. Let me double check. Yeah, Carl Strager. So Carl um, grabs Vince. Uh, grabs Pete Novak, which is Vince Vaughn's name, and fucking puts him on a table. Fucking the intestine and... torture chamber or torture device table thing. Yeah, he cuts his like gut and then he pulls an intestine out and wraps it around like a thing and, and it starts going, pulling his intestines out. And the thing that's jarring about that for me especially was uh, when she comes out the first time, she's like, I felt, I uh, experienced all of it, I felt all of it. So. Pete Novak just has that memory now in his head <laughs> of that <laughs> happening to him. Yeah. Which is fucking brutal. Yeah. And then Wait, they find... 
a real medieval torture uh, table. Yeah, because they go when they go back into Vincent D'Onofrio's house right before they go find him into Carl's house before they actually go find him. Yeah. They see that, or maybe it's after they, maybe it's after. But anyway, they see that torture device on like a picture, on like a tarot card or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which was interesting. Um, but yeah, that was fucked. And then we basically just get uh, a cool like final battle, like. Final battle between so J Lo goes back in with fucking like Matrix armor on. <laughs> he's dressed yeah. as like a he's dressed yeah. as like a fucking anime character. This whole movie, this like I bring up Fifth Element to they're like live action animes, and this felt like a live action anime. Yeah, it felt very like uh, like a Ghost in the Shell kind of a thing. Um. Okay. And uh, I really enjoyed the final battle because it was an actual, like, she fucking, like, stabs him to the floor with four knives. Yep. And then he's got these weird, this, like, weird grill across his nipples. She fucking pulls oh, yeah. that off. Yeah. yeah. Just pulls both of his nipples off. Yeah. No. Yep. And, and then, then he's like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm dying here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Blood sex. And then, and then, yeah, doesn't she like drown the kid to like kind of like save him? No, she baptizes the kid. <laughs> so, okay, sorry, before she turns into Matrix mode, yeah, that's when she, she's like Mother Mary or whatever. Okay, so I, I believe this is what happened. She kills him. And then she leaves, and then she, like she leaves the cell. She goes into that other room, and she jacks up some. She jacks up the lithium, basically. Goes yeah. back in, and she's like, "Now I control." She figured out how oh, to yeah. control it. Into her thing. Right, right, right. Because she figured out that she needed to use some drug. She about, and then that's when she is like, "Come to me, my child," uh, and baptizes them. I'm getting this. I'm getting this ending like kind of mixed up in my head. It'll do that. I think I, it, it's true. I, I'm pretty sure she baptizes him after she kills the the evil version of him. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. She also stabs him before too, when she 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 snaps out of it, stabs the serial killer, gets Pete. They get out. Then uh, she goes back in with the Mother Teresa shtick. Uh, after jacking up the lithium, and then Pete goes to get the girl. She, he, he, they, she, he got the information he needed while he was in there to figure they out. Make, uh, yeah, who sold this? Where was it sold to? Yeah. Good old so they go get. That was. Yeah, and then at the very end, J Lo baptizes the kid, and then like the final scenes are like. Vince Vaughn saving the girl, which was a, I did like that part where he like shoots the glass and smashes it out and saves her. Yeah. And then uh, they have a little conversation at the end that's like, you know, that was fucked. <laughs> I don't, where do we where do we go from here? That was crazy. And then, and then we get the final scene of the movie is she's back in with the original kid from the beginning, yeah. but she's got it's a desert. But now it's got these, uh, like, lotus blossom trees and snow in the desert, and she figured out that if she uses her new power, she can help out the kids or whatever. Exactly. So, exactly. yeah. Um, Out therapist now. Yeah. Which was, uh, which was cool. I, I really enjoyed this movie. But like I like we've ta like we covered everything. We've only got about ten minutes left. But like it wasn't. It, it was. It was kind of hard to. I didn't want to be too spoilery, but like, it's a movie from the year two thousand. I assume if if you watch this at any point, uh, you know, you will have, you will have already seen it potentially. There's not, I, not really too much to ruin, but I mean, like that's what I was saying earlier. Like, there's not really much for like you know favorite scene. Like you know what I mean. Like when after watching it, like. There wasn't really much that stuck with me, or whatever, right? Like, you know, as far as scenes, as far as like quotables, um, it was just like it was like a, you know, w worth a watch, 
I did like that the movie, like, it kept moving. Like, there was no real lull. Yeah. It was, like, w- one scene, and, and there were a couple points of the movie that had, like, call and response scenes where one thing is happening here that applies to the thing that's happening here. So the transition to the next scene is really interesting and really yeah. smooth. Um, a lot of scenes, a lot of like uh, sequences that are just like a lot of stuff happening. That's really easy to follow. And I like that in a the movie. There's movies where you watch them and fucking the first Avengers movie is guilty of this. You watch the first half, you watch the first like quarter or the first third and you're like, wow, this movie is really great. And then they yeah. have like an expedition exposition dump for a third of the movie right smack dab in the middle that almost makes it unwatchable a second time. Like when I rewatched the Avengers recently, I was like, here comes the exposition dump. And I, I went, I was like, pulled my phone at like, like so you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, and inversely, the second Avengers Age of Ultron does this thing where the first half of the movie is very no actually age of ultron is an action scene every 15 minutes and it's fucking crazy how they were able to just make this action movie for two and a half hours and it's just everything's happening age civil ultron. war civil war is a movie where the first half is like a spy espionage and it's much less action-packed in the second half which is like just all your favorite superheroes fighting each other um, those are both, the, that's kind of a bad example because the, 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 you know, spy espionage stuff in the MCU has been really good, but this doesn't suffer from the a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of nothing happening for a time. And then you're just exhausted. I just wanted to see what weird thing, what weird combination of photos they were going to show me next. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, you could probably enjoy this movie just as much without the like without the dialogue. Yeah, or like condense it into a music video. Yeah, <laughs> a Marilyn Manson music video. Yeah, yeah. The new the the two thousand and one uh, beautiful people cut. <laughs> so where we so can we turn to a Muppet movie then? Tell me what. Can we turn it into a Muppet movie? I knew you were going to bring this up, and I was like, I don't know if we can turn the cell into a Muppet movie. I don't think I don't think it can. I think Vincent D'Onofrio would be. Uh, nope, I don't even want to try. It sounds it sounds like a horrific thing to try to do. I'm just going to bring up a list of the characters. All right, who do we got for Muppets? Uh, oh, man, he could be Animal. Vince, yeah, Vince Vaughn could be Kermit. JL, of course, would be Miss... Sweet Pea? Like, yeah, from the band? The, guy, the big hairy guy? Either him or Animal could be um, could be uh, Carl or whatever. The Cell. Let's call him The Cell. Hey, he's Why The Cell? Why is called The Cell? Like, I matter. think it's called The Cell... I, I had a couple interpretations. Oh, the water she, cell. Cause the water there. cell, but that's not really what the movie is about. I think it's like the the place that they go when they go into the suit like is that, the cell. Is, like that, like, the no, cell. like when you're inside somebody's head, that's a cell. Okay. There was also that scene where Jayla was literally in that like tiny, tiny version of the cube. Right, yeah. Yeah. The imagery of some of the like long chasms reminded me of a cell. I don't know. I think there's a lot to you know what? I'm gonna Google why is it called why is the movie The Cell called The Cell? The uh the weird cartoon she was watching while she was at home getting high <clears throat> was called Fantastic Planet. The what? Oh, you found out what that cartoon was? Yeah, it was. I want. I I didn't watch it yet, but like I just remember, like when the like that scene was on. I was like, what? What is this cartoon? Like it was just. It was weird. It was it, one. The cartoon was weird. Two. It was weird that she was watching it. You know what I mean? Mhm. Yeah. She's smoking pot. That's something we forgot to bring up. Yeah. She smokes what? weed like every movie person smokes weed, though. She's like. 
<laughs> uh, I'm smoking weed because when I smoke a dry, I'm just I smoke like a cigarette, right? Yeah. Most people do, I feel like. But you know, bottom, somebody that's like bottom, like when you're when you're smoking, like when it's still full, yeah. But then once it gets to the bottom, it's like. Mm. Yeah, but she had a full joint. <laughs> and she was like, ooh, and then she fell asleep watching cartoons. Like, come on. So you're 2000. Okay, I, I don't really see why. I, I guess I could check the wiki. Yeah, I don't think it says. Yeah. Oh, it would be a criticized for. It's Silence of the Lambs inspired plot. Yeah. And masochistic imagery. St style over substance. It was. It was it was it was mostly it was all style. You know, whatever. That's, sometimes like, It was praised it was praised for its visuals, direction, makeup, costumes, and Dinofra's performance, and those are the things we talked about. Because <laughs> other than that, there's not a whole lot going on in this movie. Uh I mean that is most of the like the, the story is very cookie cutter. It's it's just a serial killer movie, but the serial killer is so fucking crazy, and the like sci-fi technology to go inside a serial like go inside people's heads. Yeah, is but it's not. They didn't eat world build. What? They didn't build a universe around it. They're just like we have this thing. We also have flip phones. We have flip phone cell phones. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you can go into people's minds if you put this. Dictile with some fucking circuitry on it. What What do you think? Yes, like how? What do you like? What do you think the cloth was supposed to do? I think the cloth was the VR helmet. Oh, okay, okay. And I think the suit was like the like VR suit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just even saying. even though like even though they didn't move around. Yeah. They were just like they just went in and then the, they just like laid still. Yeah. I don't know. I, honestly, I it, the, the more I talk about it, the more it falls apart. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was an enjoyable watch, and I'd never seen it. And I, I like this last week. I also watched uh, the Fifth Element, and the Fifth Element was fucking was great. Yeah. Was fucking phenomenal. We should have done that when this for this podcast, but I think I needed. I think the cell was a good, good way to start our summer summer series. Spectacular! So we're just at the end here. We got summer about of summer movie. Summer of summer movie series on. Hey, did you see this one? Um, hey, did you see this one? We got about five minutes left here, so let's give our final ratings and did the. We nobody came. We had two viewers tonight. That's I couldn't believe it. I think it's we like had I, one. well, there was this Kirk guy, and then yeah, this next. Color. Oh, and then this person I used to do wrestling with popped in for oh, a second. Okay. Uh, but that's fine. That's not. That's not what the point of this is. The point of it is we're recording a podcast that goes onto Instagram Live. Uh, you can find that on my Instagram Live. But uh, I gave this movie a three point eight immediately after watching it but i'm gonna bump that down to a 3.5 because of the fact that talking about it kind of made me <clears throat> dislike it a bit yeah but still appreciate I'm... still appreciate vincent d'onofrio uh and you know cool sci-fi ideas and the visuals fantastic some stuff i don't know man i'm usually pretty generous um, like I can, I can find something to like about anything for the most part. And, um, I think this is going to be one of the few movies that I rate kind of low. Um, there were some things that I kind of liked about it, but it, it's just not really like, like even just doing this, it was, it was, it's, it was kind of hard to fill a whole hour. And we, we went on tangents on other things a good majority of the time. Like, and that's never happened on our show. That hasn't happened to this point. <laughs> no, I mean I I'm not being sarcastic. I just mean that like we'll tangent if we want to talk about a different thing. We almost had a tangent this time. We got us we got over an hour on Rebel Without a Cause, and that's a black and white fifties movie. That was a dope movie. It's a dope movie. I Sorry. Uh, I didn't like I, like leaving this movie like it's it, it just I didn't take away much from it. 
it, it wasn't like it didn't really stick with me or whatever. It's not some like, ooh, I need to watch that again kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, based on like on everything, and to try and like you know have some sort of uh, uh, what's it called when you uh, I can't think of the word, but like you know just to, so that there is like a fuck, I can't think of the word, but like I'm gonna say for me, I'm gonna give it. I was going to say 2.5, but let's say 2.8. Cool. Cool. Well, yeah, we, uh, you, you went low and brought it up a bit, and I went a little bit too high and brought it down. I, uh, I just like Vincent D'Onofrio so much, but so fucking unsettling. But, uh, I, you know, he's a great actor. And if you haven't watched Daredevil, check him out as the kingpin in Daredevil. Um, so I think that's... Uh, yeah, the Netflix show. Yeah. So that's going to be it for us this week. Come back in two weeks. Yo, we're going to be doing. Next week, July 4th. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, is it Sunday? Yeah, that's Sunday, right? You want to do cool. Sunday? Or you want to watch it Sunday and then do it Monday or something? Well, well let's talk. Let's talk about it. Um, we'll see how. We'll see what's happening on Sunday. But uh, for Kaylin, I'm Jason. And for Jason, I'm Kellen. Hey, did you see that one? Did you see hey, this did one? You see this one? Hey, did you see this one? Hey, did you see this one? Hey, did you see this one? Well, you know what? I did. I have now seen <laughs> We watched it. Okay. Good goodbye. Yeah.